Hey guys, it's another Spotlight on here at AfterBuzz. I'm talking to the one, the only, Andrew Bowen. I'm so excited. Stick around. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, AfterBuzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Hello, welcome. It's AfterBuzz TV. I'm so excited. We're listening to Prince. I'm your host, Yael Teagle. If you haven't already, go to youtube.com slash AfterBuzz TV. Hit subscribe. We're also on iTunes and SoundCloud. I'm so excited. My guest, Andrew Bowen, is here. Hi, Yael. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. We were saying, like, like what song do we open up with? And I'm like, we have to open up with Prince. Yeah. And we were like, everybody's going to cry. True. Yeah. But I'm like, there's, there's a lot of Prince that it's hard to cry to because... It's Prince. And Wait, it's you can music cry that you can anything. you can it's true, you can cry to anything. <laughs> but he's good music to dance to. Yeah. Anyways. Uh <laughs> all right. We didn't open with Doves That Cry or or Purple Rain yeah. or you know. Right. So <laughs> And yes, I'm I'm wearing uh, these sunglasses in honor of Yell yeah, because yeah. Uh, she has to wear sunglasses, so I figured I would, I right. would too. Yeah, because so you cool. won't have any idea of what's uh, going on. You don't know what's it's happening. It's like it's like Nicholson. So he's got his glass. <laughs> nice. Hi. Hi. How are you? Welcome. I love that Thank we started you. with um, music knowledge and an impression. Ah, yes. Well, you know, we're gonna we yeah. gotta try to make it interesting, right? Right. Well, you're really well known for your impressions. I, I, uh, some people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna ask you to do any more, but if you, you knew feel, you would, I knew you would. <laughs> yeah, they're really good. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, maybe we'll just start. I'll just start and just start doing, doing impressions them, yeah. as we go through, Great. and I'll just answer them as, as different people. So I love it. So we can just go over there. Okay. Um, I'll just uh, <laughs> I'll slip into a little Keanu to get us started. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, Keanu, um, you're a big music fan. You, Huge. You do a lot. <laughs> I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have been recently. I feel like your Twitter and Instagram is just full of you at concerts. Uh, yeah, my my uh, I, well, yeah my my wife and I love music, and and my, uh, my our kids love music, and you know we've kind of gotten to that point where my kids are a little bit older, and and we're like you know what do we do now because it's not just the amusement parks or something fun like that. Yeah. I'm like well, we just got to start taking them to concerts, so we've been <laughs> taking them to concerts and. It's been really cool. You're like we the love, coolest dad. It's, well, you know, it's 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 you know, you know, we won't have any retirement, but you know, at least we're going to see concerts. Um, but no, we, yeah, we just decided. We said, okay, we're going to do it. So, uh, um, yeah, they, gosh, Sigur Ross, and we did um, ACDC and uh, Foo Fighters last year. And we just did 1975, yeah. and we're doing Adele. We got Adele tickets. <laughs> Opening night, yeah. so it's kind of yeah, it's gonna go strong. It's and you got cool. to see Prince three times. I, I got to see Prince three times. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, first time was on the Arsenio Hall so, Hall show. Wow, way back in 1991 or two, and ah, uh, uh, God, it's just the whole world stops when he would play. Yeah, when he would start, you just there was no. It was like the entire focus of the universe just went. Whoop, he'd pull it right in, mm-hmm. and you couldn't go anywhere. And it was it was magical and intense and cool and it was just you just everybody would move everybody would move yeah and then when he p- did his stand at the forum it was I, it was great it went forever and he wasn't he didn't have a planned set list and he would just pull out the guitar and then feel out the crowd and he would suddenly play something and, and like like I got a little red Corvette on my night and no one else got it on any of other <laughs> other shows and and. Um, it was just he was he was phenomenal and his he, his guitar playing was I mean that's one of the things that, that people are like don't even you know they sometimes don't really acknowledge about but I mean like you know Eric Clapton was a fan of him and, mm-hmm. and, and he, he people would definitely try to stay up with what he was he was capable of doing with that instrument and it was like it was it was an extension of his soul and God when he would solo he could just he would go on forever especially yeah. in the concerts he would just drop into this thing and and then he'd be able to move with the high heels and, and play it was crazy prince was awesome we're gonna miss him it's he's he was 57 that's 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 just too young that's, yeah. that's way too young yeah. um so um i'm i feel very honored that i uh i got to see him and it was interesting because when we were talking about going to concerts well, I talked recently with my wife and I was saying, you know, oh, I definitely got to make sure that we take him to see Prince when Prince goes back out again because the kids got to see him, see him live. Aww. And now I can't do that. Yeah. So, so I'm gonna have to pull up my little videos from my shows <laughs> and say, that's, that's it. Back, but, uh, back when they were on like bad yeah, phones and yeah, that footage yeah. is awful. Oh, it is. <laughs> 
It is awful. Well, I don't think I have Air City Hall footage because I don't think we had <laughs> cell phones at that point. We had um, the big camcorder on your shoulder. We had these shoulder. things on your shoulder. <laughs> and your cell phone was like in the car. Yeah. And like if you had one, it was like, holy shit, you are legit. <laughs> like, you know, you take it off and you press the button and it would take a minute before it connected. Right. But you were, and you were in your car going, oh my God, I am talking to you from inside of a car. <laughs> Um, oh, the yeah. good old days. Ah, oh, the good old days. Yes, I've aged myself brilliantly. See, that's really the reason why we're wearing the sunglasses, is right. so nobody can see all my wrinkles. Same. <laughs> Same. Um, awesome shirt, by the way. Thank you. I know that you're a big nerd, so Super I... Super nerd. I came to... Super nerd. To impress with nerd shirts. You impressed. Thanks. You impressed well with nerd shirts. Yes. Um, yes. Do you play any instruments? I do. I play a little bit of guitar, um, but I never... It was never like my jazz, mm -hmm. and I don't mean jazz as in like necessarily the style of music. But <laughs> it's I not always your jam. yeah, it's not your jam. Like for me, you know, whatever it is that makes you makes you tick in life is your jazz. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, for me, acting and and creating was is is more my jazz. So, but I loved music, and I have so many friends that were musicians. And then and then it turns out that my son, you know, a year and a half ago, he he goes, I I think I want to learn how to play guitar, and I'm like, oh, okay. And he's, you know, he's a Libra, so I'm figuring it's going to last for a week, and then okay. it's going to go away. So <laughs> I got him the basic stuff, and and uh, and he hasn't put it down. And he's just, it's, he plays six, seven hours a day, and he's writing music, and it's been phenomenal. So, yeah. you know, I get to spend my summer listening to Led Zeppelin live in my garage, so <laughs> that's been pretty awesome. So the the music popped out somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but for me, and it's funny because my, 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 I had an acoustic Ibanez, and he, he has it now, so... So, um, which is good because he can play it way better than I can. You have like an artistic family. But your wife's yeah. a photographer. My wife's a photographer. Yeah, Renee Bowen Photography. Yeah, um, and you should look that up. Reneebowen.com. It's she, she's she's legit. She's, I did look like, it up. She's really good. It's good stuff. Yeah, there's a reason why she's 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 so busy. Like her, <laughs> she's busy like all the time. Like she is constantly booked out uh, because you know yeah she's 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 good. She really she you know there's 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 it's not just about taking pictures. It's it's there's so much more than that mm -hmm. and, and some people just they have an innate a ability to be able to you know compose uh you know art within a frame in their eye and yeah. know when to click that button you know yeah, yeah it's like i couldn't ever do that um and she has this wonderful ability to just bam catch it she catches people and it's it's and people are like <laughs> How did you do that? And she, yeah, oh, well, that's what I do. So, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there's some arts, artsy, artsy fartsies in the family. Um, well, you also have another, an, another actor, a musician. Yes. Yeah, my 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 son, the the guitarist, he does some acting, and my daughter does a little bit, and my eldest son did a little bit too. But it was just sort of like just stuff along the way. I have three, mm -hmm. um, but um, they're all they're not all artists. Like my eldest son is super computer. Mm whiz dynamo like he's crazy crazy good like anything wrong with your computer he can fix it he built his own computer when he was like 13 of course and it's still working and like you know, the, the specs on it are ridiculous um <laughs> well, and son then, of a geek yes yeah, son of a geek <laughs> and then uh and then my daughter does it too i mean she just did a play at school but you know, she but her she's in her hands too i mm. mean she's an amazing artist um but also she loves biology and you know so i think she's she's looking at college where she can balance those two out yeah. so well you know whatever they want to do that's what we always said you know find find what your jazz is and whatever it is you can do it it's possible so yeah. just go for it you know? so you found your jazz early on yes um you knew you wanted to be an actor mm -hmm. and you um did you were on a sketch show i was uh, called mad tv called mad tv yeah yes um here we go now <laughs> and we go into something else yeah talking about mad tv yeah it was fun it was a show was on <laughs> in the mid '90s into 2000. Crazy people doing things. It was fun. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Anyways, yes, uh, did Mad TV. Um, what was your favorite part about doing Mad TV? Was it the impressions? Was it the sketches? Was it writing, performing? Uh, it was having a steady paycheck as yeah. an actor. That was pretty awesome. Um, no, I mean it was. See, all of it. It was. It was. It was. Uh, it was a great experience. It was a great learning experience. I had never done sketch or or, or, or um, improv or anything before. I mean, traditionally been trained, yeah. and that was just always kind of a total goofball, and would just impersonate people to make my friends laugh and entertain, you know, my family. Um, so that was just a really great lesson, and you know, sort of the structure of all that. And and uh, you know, it's it's it was really it was really very humbling too, being around 
you know, incredibly talented, funny people, you know, yeah. you know, you really gotta, you gotta respect for, you know, how good, you know, people can be and, and that, that element of it. And it was, it was just, it, you know, it was, it was good and it was hard and it was all sorts of other stuff. Um, but, um, you know, I think the coolest thing about it is, you know, with, with mad TV, is the fan base mm -hmm. like the true mad tv fans are like it's a family it's a very different group of people like i will i to this day and you know i, I haven't been on the show it was like 10 15 right. years ago or more um and i'll still bump up to people and be like oh my god like like I, you were my 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 high school or you know this is how i grew up was yeah. watching you because like you know snl this was like especially when i was there it was sort of that 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 time when we were sort of really i think producing better comedy mm -hmm. and but there was just something raw and it was just i mean you know again i don't you know it's it's the easiest way to someone's heart is, is through their funny bone so and i think we got to do that and that was just it's just an honor it's an honor to be able to to still see that those things those things uh they've held up to the the, yeah. the test of time which has been cool the test of time i, don't know, <laughs> I went back into them again sorry um, um do you still uh do some sketch or improv or anything not i mean not like a lot i mean you know i i, I still I sort of improv that sort of um on your feet kind of mm -hmm. you know spontaneity that happens every time i act just because it's that's sort of part of the process yeah um, but uh, not not necessarily like traditionally like you know I can't say go to you know um, Brownlings or used to be or whatever and, mm -hmm. and I'm up on stage I don't I'm not I'm not really doing a lot of that but okay. um, uh, I whenever the opportunity presents itself I definitely do jump and have some fun so yeah all right um, I've been holding this back because I'm oh such a big fan girl um, I want to talk about leverage leverage because I loved that show. And you see the eyes now. I've yeah. decided to see the eyes. Like, mm, see the eyes. Well, let's get someone to say, why did you take your eyes off? Leverage. Leverage. Uh, brilliant, brilliant. Amazing series. show. Yeah. And you were on one of the best episodes. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I say that someone who's watched the series multiple times. Like I said, big fan of Leverage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and let's talk about your episode, because you were telling me before we started how that episode came to be. Yeah. Um, well, I was just, uh, uh, you know, I got... The, the call for the audition and I went in and, and, and auditioned and I had a good audition and, and uh, I didn't really know the extent of the show because usually when you audition you don't necessarily get to read a script mm -hmm. you kind of have to kind of piecemeal what your story is or what your character is from your sides and so um, when I got it and I went up there I just I had no idea that it was going to be such a in-depth you know a big you know it's like you don't get that on when you do guest star stuff yeah. usually you're in there for a day or two days maybe um and you do your stuff and you're out and this was two weeks of like every single day you know 16 hour days working and and it was cool because it was such a different uh, approach because the show was always about the guys going in and taking down the bad guy in a cool right. way and this was fixing the bad guy mm -hmm. so they're trying to save somebody you know it was that whole inception kind of you know, <laughs> take on it and um PJ Pesci was the director, and Jeffrey Thorne wrote it, and uh, John Rogers, and and I just remember getting there to the because it shot up in Portland. I remember arriving the the first day before we shot, and and they were all there, and we met at the bar, and just had a cocktail and talked about the characters, and it was really cool. It was just sort of like that great chance to just really be immersive in that process of telling a story, and it was it was a, it was a joy. I was very lucky. I was very yeah. lucky to get that that opportunity, and. And, uh, and it was awesome to work with everybody too because they just stepped up. I mean, they're just, they're talented. You know what I mean? Every single one of the people on that show yeah. from, from Aldous to Beth is just, phew, they were rock stars and they still are. Yeah. So well, when you um, are a guest star on a show mm -hmm. and people always say that uh, when you're on a show, your family, everyone's so close. Mm -hmm. um, what is it like coming in as a guest star? when you're not part of the family, you're like the new boyfriend that someone's brought yeah. home and yeah. everyone's like, uh, I don't know how I feel about this Yeah, new yeah, yeah. It's interesting, it's interesting, it's interesting. I mean, it's, it's, there's definitely, there's definitely nerves and there's definitely pressure for your first day, you know? Um, that's why you're really lucky if you get more than one day. Because for me, I like getting to know my crew. I like getting to know everybody who's working and, and, and trying to get to know people's names. And so I usually, if I get more than a couple of days, I always really make sure I spend my first two days just getting to know everybody because, you know, we're all working together to make yeah. it anyways. Um, so w when you get there, yeah, it's just, 
Yeah, you are. You're the you're the boyfriend that kind of have to to prove if you're worth kissing or not. I right. guess. And well, so, so now you're yeah. saying you're the boyfriend who comes in and is like, I got to make sure all the grandparents like me. All everybody so likes that I can me. Propose. Right. Right. So like I can that's propose. That's where you're at. So I can propose exactly. <laughs> um, and then usually it's just you know uh, you know you're, you're prepped and you do your work and you go up and then once you start it's usually you know everybody's like oh okay you know <laughs> all right you know. He's capable. He, he's capable. <laughs> we can do this, and then and then it just gets into the fun because everybody's just past the, yeah. you know, who are you, and and uh, you know, again, usually you don't get to get that close, um, uh, but uh, you know, I, I I I've been lucky that I haven't I, I have I've yet to run into any kind of ego situation or anything where somebody feel like they were I was stepping in their world. It's always <laughs> been like very much like oh cool you know here's someone good to come in and 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 help you know, they play and do yeah. what they do, you know, because I think that I definitely, when you're doing, you know, a series and you're doing episode by episode, it can get to a place where it's kind of monotonous and it's mm -hmm. kind of like that same thing. So I think that, you know, when you, when you get an actor in that's, you know, um, you know, good at what they do, you know, I think everybody goes, oh, cool, because then I have, they have something to feed off of right. and bounce off of and it gets them to, you know, you know, keep their, keep their fire rolling and yeah. keep their game on, you know? Mm -hmm. so, and you have this, uh, you guys should go check this out on his website, theandrewbowen.com. Um, the the compilation of the character, the character arc My. from beginning to end, because that, it wasn't just, you know, when you have a guest starring role, you, you they come on and they like appear and do a thing. Yeah, usually to help yeah. sell the ex, you know, exposition yeah. and, and, right. and whatnot. Yeah. And maybe they're in some scenes, but you, we see an entire character go from like messed up to worse, worse. <laughs> to like oh wait I'm gonna get better better to, to I'm okay gonna, yeah, yeah yeah it was really really awesome it really was a full arc um, and that that's really why I put it up because you know as an actor you know when you have your reels it's usually just you know a little quick hey this right. is what I do so you can see it and people go oh okay I, I like him and bring him in and right. and uh, you know um, I just you know I thought well maybe I could I should put in something that shows people that you know you know, you, you, you can have an opportunity to sort of show right. how an arc is built. Yeah. And so that's why I put it in there, which, which again was really lucky that I got to do the show, that I got to be able to have right. that much stuff to do. It yeah. was really, really cool. Uh, all right. That's enough about me geeking out <laughs> leverage. It's just amazing. Um, so you also do voice work. Yes. Um, you got to be Johnny Cage on Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat, yeah. Um, Mortal Kombat X. How cool is that? That's pretty bitching. That's pretty bitching. <laughs> that was pretty bitching. Yeah, it was. It was awesome, and it's. It's the and the fans are awesome, and and I'm sure you've seen the game or played the yeah. game. It's freaking. It's wicked. It's there's a reason <laughs> why it's been so successful, and it's cool because people have really embraced kind of because this is like the older Johnny. This is yeah. Johnny who's aged in time, but he's still Johnny, and he's still like, pfft, you know. Oh, am I not allowed to do that? <laughs> you've I already forgot. dropped some words. Have it's I? Fine. I didn't even ask. That. I did. I did. I did a podcast last night with a. Um, and and I, I asked beforehand. I said, "What's the what's the rule on, on colorful metaphors and stuff?" And they're like, "Oh, you can all the way." So uh, I didn't <laughs> ask before we got in here. Now, so um, sorry, you already did it. We're bad. good. Okay, so um, <laughs> sorry, you guys are gonna get. Um, uh, do, do you get charged for that? Or nah. Something? Okay, good. Nah. Well, I'll try to keep them keep them pulled back now. <laughs> Say whatever you want. Um, so voice work. Uh, what's the difference for you when you're performing as a voice actor um, or as a on screen actor? Um. A lot. Uh, well, with the voiceover work, you don't normally get your script in advance. Mm. Um, you actually almost never get your script in advance. You actually are just get to see it when you're actually in the booth. So um, you, when you're there, it's very much, um, it's very much you have to run from. Uh, it's almost like you're firing on your instincts, mm -hmm. um, which you have to do anyways. But you know, on the on the on camera side, you can prep your sides and you know get your dialogue down and, and work on all your sort of beats and stuff yeah. and with with um with voiceover you don't really have the chance to do that so it's sort of knowing who you are knowing what your character is and then you know you read the line and you lay it out so it's just bam 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 and sort of like just this really quick kind of fast energy that you have with the producer and the director and, and the and the engineer usually in the room and you just it's it's a very it's a very quick process because I mean you can do you can do in like you know 150 200 lines in like four hours yeah so you're just whoosh, ripping through the system um, so it's very much it's just quick you mm -hmm. know because sometimes if you don't know what the reference is I have to tell you what your reference is oh you just came at this and you're like oh, okay and who am I talking to and you're like okay and you just kind of it's crazy it's it's crazy and, and fun yeah um, and also because it's your voice it's a, just a different you don't have to worry about it's not like you worry about your face, but 
you know, there's there's these little details you can do with stuff that you don't realize. Mm -hmm. And with voiceover, you know, you drop lower, it sounds different. And if you go higher, it does this different thing and you really can kind of texturize mm -hmm. who that character is. Um, Cause you're just sort of using this sort of different tool. It's cool, it's cool, it's very different, but but cool. And, and, um, and, and yeah, quick, fast, quick, fast, <laughs> quick, fast. And, uh, um, but you get to do great stuff. And with Johnny, it was really fun too, because you know we would get everything down, and then uh, we usually spend some time just improving stuff. Yeah. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff in the game and stuff that were just, you know, improvs that we came up with on the spot, just throwing stuff out there. That's awesome. Which is really fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you're using yeah. your improv. <laughs> <laughs> trying to use it where I can. <laughs> um, yeah. Trying to use it where I can. So, um, but uh, um, yeah, that's 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 the big difference, basically. You know. Okay. Um, I have done mocap before, mm -hmm. which is you know when you're in a big volume and you got your yeah, yeah the dots. Fucking, <laughs> I just did it again. <laughs> these goofy suits, and you look like an idiot. But um, but that's cool too because it's really sort of like you know theater in the red, and, right. and and you sort of have to really kind of you really have to pretend like you're walking around with stuff, and you you gotta. Because yeah. I remember at one point I was we we had these guns and. And uh, we weren't, it wasn't believable that the guns were heavy, so they put more weights on the guns so that, you know, you got the believable that these yeah. guns are bigger. And so, yeah, that was, that was, that was exercise. Because <laughs> they put a lot of weights, like, this much, really? Uh, yeah, because the gun's the size of your body. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, um, but they have like usually a screen where they give you a little avatar of what your character is, and you oh, can cool. see, see the universe. So you have a chance to be able to go because oh, you because because it's just basically this blank room, and you have to walk and then go here, and you're going to duck under this arm and then turn around and fire down this hallway. Yeah. But there's nothing in front of you, so you know they give you your your blocking points, and then you're able to look up and go, oh, I see it now. That's the arm from the from the cannon that's hanging. Yeah. So you can get around it and then come around and shoot down the hallway. So it's fun. It's just it's all imagination, you know. I think that's which is acting. You know, you just yeah. got to go with your imagination. And, right. and so if you have a big imagination, it's that's definitely fun because you can just. Yeah. The geek inside of you is probably like, oh my god! Oh, I've definitely, I've definitely had the geek moments because I, I mean, I think probably my biggest was was a VO thing because yeah. I got to play um, uh, hit, uh, Hudson um, uh, in the Aliens game, mm -hmm. and like, I, like, I, like here's a movie I'd, I've seen. I mean, I've probably seen Aliens a thousand times, <laughs> and uh, only and a thousand Hudson, times. Only a thousand yeah. times. And Hudson, I mean, I, I just all day long. It's all I ever did, you know. You know, and 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 so to be in there and to be actually doing him in the game and <laughs> screwed, man. <laughs> you know, it was just really great. It was really great. And and uh, I was just I, I floated for like a week, you know, <laughs> after doing that one. I was like, oh my gosh, I actually got to be Hudson. So that was that was pretty rad. <laughs> that was pretty rad. That's awesome. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about movies. Yes, yes. Because um, you have some big movies. Yeah. We need to talk about. So let's talk about holidays. Okay. Um, which, okay, so it's an anthology. It's an anthology. All right. It's little shorts. Sort of. Sort it's, of. It's it's eight. It's eight yeah. individual short films. Right. That are um, themed different by holidays. A different holidays. I, that are I, all I, horror themed. Yeah. Done by a different director, and they're all put into one film so it's like sort of an anthology yeah. that could conceivably be I'm sure there will be more you know people have really liked so, it so far yeah, yeah. It's, uh, the horror nerds are like yes yes <laughs> yes it is no it's it's uh, it, it's uh, it was really cool and they got uh, some amazing directors just amazing I mean you know um, just you know Gary Shore and, and Adam E. Mortimer and just just like you know uh, Kevin Smith Kevin Smith yeah um uh and it's just everybody did their own take yeah you know and, and they were really allowed to um sort of go with it you know they were given this budget and said you know go make what you want to make and it wasn't sort of anybody over your shoulder so they're able to just do their own kind of weird and twisted and bizarre yeah. stuff i don't know it, it, and and so but what's cool about it is like there's there's a little there's something for everybody in it you right. know there's something for the gore hounds and there's something for the for the ghost people and there's something for the you know the the creepy monster people and there's all little bits and pieces of that in there and just sort of you know pulled together in this sort of anthology and and it's just been really cool you know it's like when you do these things especially when you do sort of independent films um you never know which one is going to see the light of day yeah. I and mean, i've done tons and that never you know never got it and in you know to have this one and like two like actually you know see the light in the same month was yeah. like wow crazy and it was so cool when we found out about tribeca because it was like 
right. wow, like Tribeca is legit. Yeah. Like, that's a legit, <laughs> that's a legit film festival. Like they don't just let films in, you know? Yeah. And the fact that we were that they wanted us to, to open the, the midnight section was just it was wicked and it was cool. I flew to New York and, and we were all there. And that was actually, actually the first time I got to see the film too. Oh. Was when we did our screening, so that was cool because Adam wouldn't let me see it. <laughs> Adam, the director, was uh, um, he, he was great. He was awesome, and he was just like he just kept on like, can you see it? And I'm like, I'm, he's like, no, 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 I want you, I want you, I want to wait. I want you to see it in front of an audience. And I'm like, really? And he's like, yes, yes. And I'm like, okay. But it was great, you know. It was cool because it, it was. It's it's much better to just kind of watch it like that because again, your experience doing it and seeing it is a very different thing. Mm -hmm. I know for me, it's like I don't, I don't. I'm never like judgmental or something like that. I don't really necessarily like watch it to judge myself because I don't. Whatever I'm doing at the time was perfect. Mm -hmm. I couldn't change that, and I can't go back in time. Yeah. So for me, it's fun to just sort of sit back and watch the story and see how it's put together. And and it was really cool to see the final product and go, oh wow, you know, and seeing stuff that we were worked on and see what worked yeah. and this that, and the other. And it was amazing, like you know, because we it was it was some serious bruising. Like we uh, it was it was some, <laughs> Lorenzo and I just like dug in deep on that one and went for it, and so yeah. it turned out really well. It's been so a cool it's film. not just it's not just different. Um, genres of horror or m mini subgenres of horror but it's also different holidays yeah. that you would never think of yeah yeah um yeah. as horror yeah yeah and you were in well, the well some of them do some, some of them, them do. do like halloween yes. makes sense valentine's, valentine's day makes day. sense sure you have christmas mother's day mother's father's day, day. <laughs> st patrick's day st patrick's day oh my god gary's that's so there's some really cool shit you guys when you see it you'll see what i mean but easter too yeah easter, <laughs> easter. dude wait Wait till it's <laughs> Easter, folks, because like there's some. I almost did the colorful metaphor there, but like there there's something in there that's just the creepiest thing I've ever seen in my life. It was like, oh, that's great. That's and you're stuff. in New Year's Eve. And I'm in New Year's Eve. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the plot of New Year's sure, Eve? Sure, sure. I play a guy uh, named Reggie who uh, has a very, um, very twisted view of relationships. Um, <laughs> And, uh, uh, you know, his sort of idea of, of a girlfriend is sort of keeping her in a certain place um, and perhaps tied up right. until, you know, she realizes how, 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 how much of him is there is to love. That sounds totally um, reasonable. Yeah. But it doesn't <laughs> normally work out. So I think he gets a new girlfriend every year or so and uh, gets rid of, rid of the old one. Oh. Um, and uh, it happens to be New Year's and uh, there's this girl that's, you know, uh, alone, you know, no one to go out with on New Year's Eve, and she gets a matchup on, on one of these uh, websites, these dating sites, yeah. which is like a ninety percent match with my character. Which, when you see it, you might go, well, "How did you guys get matched up?" But, um, <laughs> and then we go out for the evening, and um, uh, I think both of us have um, uh, not so uh, up and up intentions. And it just it builds to uh, uh, a pretty pretty hellishly crazy funny um, clashing of, of some individuals. That's all I'll say. <laughs> okay. Um, um, but it's available now on yep. iTunes. So. It's available on iTunes and VOD, um, and it also uh, opens tomorrow in um, ten cities uh, theatrically. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, here in California, it's playing at the Lemley in Santa Monica. Um, and then it's playing in New York, um, I think Boston, Chicago. There's a bunch of them. You have to look it up. Yeah. But, so you have a chance of either going out and ch checking it out in the theater, or you can watch it on VOD yeah. or, or iTunes. So it's, yeah. it's cool. So you got to watch it now. Yeah, you got to watch it now. <laughs> so you got to go watch it now. Um, no, it was really cool because it's like one of the first times that a film has opened, had its opening premiere at a film festival and been released the next day. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. Um, and it was cool that we were able to get a deal like that that quickly. Yeah. So somebody was like, oh, this is cool. We got to get it out there. So. Right. But it's also something too that because of the holidays we can revisit it yeah. throughout the rest of the year, do little <laughs> teasers holiday. by oh by the way, you know, Mother's Day's coming up. It's it's, <laughs> it's uh, but there's so many more to do, which I right. think is great about the producers have you know with um, John Hedgeman who just who's uh, with uh, Blumhouse and he's one of the main producers on this. Um, you know, there's like thirty six or three hundred. I think there's three hundred sixty holidays yeah. all around the world. So that's a lot of anthologies <laughs> you can do. And I mean, they still haven't done Thanksgiving, 4th of July, <laughs> uh, Labor Day. I mean, there's there's right. lots, there's lots, there's, there's there's lots there. Is there one that you've thought of that you're like, this is gonna be the best? No, I haven't. I haven't thought of what would be the best. Um, <laughs> that's funny, now I'm gonna rack my brain. Uh, gosh. 
You could do I think Thanksgiving. I think Thanksgiving. I think Thanksgiving could definitely be. Yeah. I think there's. I think there's. There's some good stuff in oh, Thanksgiving. Oh sure. Yeah. Something involved with food. I was actually thinking something involved with like a chainsaw. And chainsaw and right. food. Yeah. Right. Because like yeah. like you're cutting a turkey. Yeah, and you just figure about how you know families come together and how much we certainly hate our families. And <laughs> I can certainly see how something builds to something where you know perhaps when it comes to the dinner table somebody right. isn't there and one of them one person is just smiling and everybody's like this is the <laughs> best. This is is this ham? It's uh, ham. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, I think that, that could definitely that could definitely be it. But um, but yeah, but holidays definitely check it out. I mean, right. it's been, and you know, the reviews have been really awesome, really positive across yeah. the board. And and uh, you know, I think it's 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 listed up there as one of the top top uh, horrors to check out right now. And and uh, so I mean, definitely if you're a horror fan and you like watching twistedly weird <laughs> weird s h i t. Um, <laughs> You'll love it. You'll love it. And it's it's entertaining. And the great thing about it, too, is that, you know, again, you have these eight films. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it's almost like a it's almost like there's there's a part of me I've seen about this the other day. that's almost kind of perfect for this sort of YouTube generation mm-hmm. or, or, or social media generation because they don't have a long attention span. They don't, right. They can't. It's hard for them to sit through something. But this one's great because you got, you know, eight, ten minutes of something and then it right. closes. So, you know, you've got breaks where you can just <laughs> pause it or you can go get a soda or, you know wash your hands or throw up and then come back and watch the next one or check Facebook and then come back (laughs) and tweet about it. I'm up to this one. Um, So it's uh, it's cool. Yeah, definitely go check it out. Awesome. And we have Poe. And Poe. Which is your other film. Poe. And this one's real personal to you. Well, night and day too. It's so weird to have like, like, you know, to get two movies, to do two movies and have them actually, you know, be out there and, and, and finding life, but then also to have them at the same, like, this will never happen. I don't, this will probably never happen again in my life. Um, so I was like, I have to, this is crazy. Well, yeah, because um, next time it'll be three movies. Rah, oh, mm-hmm. being there, to the, to the, to the noise, we could catch, 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 and rebirth. Um, uh, that's, that was goodness, catch and rebirth. I see. Um, uh, I yeah, Poe, 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 I was, I'm gonna I'm gonna just listen to Purple Rain tonight and just okay. I'm gonna cry and have whiskey and and then just continue listening to good music. Um so Poe, um Which yeah, won so, Best so, Feature at the Palm Beach uh, International uh, Film Festival. Palm Beach and it won the uh, jury prize at the um uh, uh, uh World Fest Houston, um which is the big one that everybody votes on. Yeah. And also there, uh Julian Fetter, who plays the lead character in it, won uh, the Rising Star Award. Um, he's amazing in this mm-hmm. film. Uh, it's a, it's a, basically it's a, it's a drama about a father um, whose wife dies of cancer, and he's left to raise his nine-year-old son with autism. And um, you know, for families out there who have kids in the spectrum, it's hard. There's yeah. a lot of challenges that are that are facing that, and and it's just a really authentic, you know, beautifully heartfelt story about sort of the struggles of this this one man and, and this son to sort of you know, try to make everything work. Um, and on the flip side, it has this wonderful, gives you this wonderful sort of glimpse of the world through the eyes of a child with autism, mm-hmm. which um, John John Asher, who's the director, did this amazing job of like imagination. Yeah. Like it's, there's so many levels to this film that are not the typical, it's not, no one's made a movie like this yet. And um, it's just, yeah, it's been really, really, really amazing. Um, and I'm so glad that, that audiences are sort of, you know, are starting to sort of take, you know, yeah. take on with it. I mean, it's, it's, it's something like bring your tissue paper because it's, it's impossible to not like have that hit you here. I mean, because right. it comes from that. But John, um, John has a son with autism. I do too. Mm-hmm. Um, so does uh, Christopher Gorham, who plays the lead character and uh, our, our writer. So, it's just authentic. Mm-hmm. There's authentic all around the board on yeah. this thing. And um, and when John sent me the script, I cried like, you know, three times reading it. And that was just, it hit really close to home. Yeah, I almost cried watching the trailer. Yeah. It's really... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, just wait till you see the movie. Like, yeah. if you thought the trailer got you, forget it. Forget <laughs> it. Forget it. And, and my wife, too, when I took my wife to see it, because she was like, you know, I kept on checking in on her, right? And yeah. she was like... She was she was she was being strong. She's like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let it get to me. Yeah, you know. And sure enough, there's this one. I knew when it was coming, and I knew when I hit. I was like, mm. yeah. I looked over and whoo, just they were just flowing down. I'm like, yes. <laughs> um, yeah. No, she she. I'm just saying, but it's uh, um, it's really good. And 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 I got to play this uh, John. I've known John for a number of years, the director. Yeah. And he's been trying to get this movie. It's been in like a nine year labor labor of love to yeah. get this thing off the ground. And he wrote the part 
for you. He wrote, a, yeah, he did. He sent me the script and I read it and I cried and I said, I, you know, I kind of ha- have to play the dad because like this is, even right. though it's, it's as hard as it would be, I have to do it. And he was like, I, we already have a cast and you know. <laughs> You're like, I got to play this oh, part. Uh, I, I, we nope. have a cast. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, well then. Uh, Thanks for sending the script. All then. righty then. Uh, and, uh, but I was like, I, I didn't, I mean, honestly, I was like, that's totally cool. Whatever yeah. you need, I'll PA on this, whatever you needed to get this movie made, and we'll do it. And he said, I have something, I have an idea. So I'm just, and then there's, I think there's 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 something I have an idea to, to do with you. And then to make two weeks later, he sent me a, a revised script and he had added this character in it um, that I can't really talk about, which sucks. Like we have to do a, we have to do a, a, a a follow up uh-huh. when everybody's had a chance to see the movie because then I can really talk about Jack. Yeah. But um all I know is there's five incarnations yeah, of Jack. Yeah, there's he, I got to he you know, he got he has to be I got to be five different sort of incarnations of this guy. He's sort of he's kind of an important part of Poe's journey in the film. Mm-hmm. Um and uh it it was amazing. I couldn't uh, I, it was like it was like winning the acting jackpot. Yeah. For one movie, like you never get a chance to do this kind of stuff. It's like I got to check literally five things off my acting bucket list. Like, oh, okay, been able to play that character, that character, that character. Um, but it was great too because it was, it was instrumental to sort of a balance in the film because the film is really heavy. But you know, this sort of um, the stuff with Poe and when we sort of kind of get to start to see his world because mm-hmm. you know uh, I'm a part of the imagination. It's sort of like these moments that allow you to kind of catch your breath. Yeah. You know, it brings the light back out in the world. And then, um, which I think is, just, you know, I always said when we were shooting, I'm like, if you can pull off this balance, this will be brilliant. This will yeah. be brilliant. No one's ever done this before. And uh, and I think that he, he clearly has. So um, I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited about it. And the movie's actually dedicated to, uh, um, you know, to my son as well, which he didn't know until after the screening. And I remember he was like sitting next to me and I, his name came up and I was like, and he was like, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's you. And he's like, okay. <laughs> Um, so uh, yeah it's great so uh, um, yeah look for that I mean if you're in California um, uh, our next screening is uh, we're in the Newport Beach Film Festival um, which is awesome it's really another really high end festival Um, um, and uh, we screen at 2.30 on on Saturday afternoon Um, and then right afterwards is the big awards um, celebration because they're um, they're celebrating Burt Baccarat who Mm -hmm. um, who actually gave songs and helped compose the film and like so many people gave stuff wow. like we got a um a billy idol song like for free his company gave it to us for the movie and wow like it's 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 for an independent film that's the other thing about it is like you 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 won't believe how big it is for the amount of money they had to make it with right. i mean it was just john took this budget and just went blew it out the sides of the room and yeah. it's, it's just it's like wow you know it's big it really opens it up so if you're around again another plug yeah do it on um, Saturday Newport Beach Film Festival 230 you can go to the Newport Beach Film Festival website and you can buy tickets I think there's some still available I'll be there John will be there uh, Julian will be there again the young man who plays uh, um, Poe the lead, lead character yeah. and he Julian like seriously like I, I, I told him I think I even told that when we were shooting but then, like after I saw the movie, I said, "All right, so like when you get your Oscar nomination, yeah. let me see you let that mm, get to your head because I will <laughs> kick your ass. All right, you stay grounded on it. Like, oh, okay, but I mean seriously, it's 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 so nuanced and advanced for someone his age. Yeah, I mean it's really detailed work, um, and you know it's one of those things that like you know when when uh, you know DiCaprio did Gilbert Grape." Uh, and most people who didn't know DiCaprio just thought that they had found this amazing, you know, right. uh, affected kid to, to be in the film, and um, and it wasn't. It was acting, and, and Julian's the same thing with this. I mean, he's it's it's like, is that do they really get a kid who has autism to be this lead? And they they didn't. He's just an actor, but he just really he and John like took the time, and it's phenomenal. It's really phenomenal yeah. to see him see him do well, his stuff. Here's hoping it doesn't take him as long as it took Leo. <laughs> Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. I can't believe but it's funny, like it was so great when he finally won. Like like the <laughs> internet went nuts or like people in rooms that were like <sighs> yes. he's like our best friend. Finally that we were there for him. Yes. It was like, come on, come on, give it to him. <laughs> yes, it was good. It was happy. And I think now he can just 
go back to continuing to be freaking cool freaking Leo and awesome DiCaprio. and Leo DiCaprio, right? Uh, all right. <laughs> well, thank you so much Is for joining us. Is that it? Well, that was yeah. quick. Well, we we had... chatted. We chatted a lot. We didn't even get to get, get into the nerd stuff that much. We didn't get... Well, we totally nerded out. We though. nerded out a bit, though. Well, yeah. But... <laughs> yeah. Civil um, War's coming, so that'll be yeah. cool. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Civil War. Um, if you want to tell people... Did you see the uh, uh, Doctor Strange trailer teaser? Oh, yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah. Doctor Strange. Although, Benedict Cumberbatch without his accent is weird. It's it's it, it's it was for a second. It wasn't weird. It was for me. I went. I actually went. That's that sounds really good. Like I didn't hear any Benedict in there. Yeah, I went. Who is that? Yeah, <laughs> I didn't which like I it. went because it's because it was. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> um, but tell people where they can keep up with you and nerd out with you on the internet. Ah, yes. Um, I'm on Twitter, which is uh, at Andrew S Bowen. Um, Instagram is uh, Andrew S Bowen. The S stands for stupid. Um, what, what? No, <laughs> it's like what are your parents are mean. <laughs> Shithead. Um, <laughs> um, Andrew S Bowen. Uh, the and then, Andrew S Bowen or the no, Andrew just, Bowen.com. The the Andrew Bowen.com. And I'm. That sounds so narcissistic. That was not my intention. I couldn't get Andrew Bowen. I still can't. It's some like you know neuroscientist in like England, and he has all the Andrew Bowen.com. So yeah. I had to find something else, and the only option was really the Andrew Bowen. I went, ah, oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's and then fine. I realized, oh my god, that's just so like the Andrew Bowen. You've reached the Andrew Bowen. Welcome. And that's not. That's no, not, he's the British one. Right. I know, but it's just very sort of. Yeah. It's, that wasn't the intention. But the Andrew Bowen.com, and and uh, you know I blog and stuff on that, and. Yeah. and and then, uh, yeah, uh, Vine. I'm on Vine. I think Andrew You're Bowen. You're on Snapchat now? I'm on Snapchat now. <laughs> Chat, Snapchat's interesting. I just will warn you in advance on Snapchat. I take no responsibility for what you might see. Because um, I tend to pull out that snap when I've had a decent amount of whiskey. And it can, tends to be very funny. I'm going to start following um, you. Snapchat. Snapchat. Um, and, uh, again, I have a fa Facebook fan page and, yeah. and whatnot. So, um, you know, if and, you want to, yeah. you know, it, it's out there. Of course, Holidays is now on iTunes, VOD. And theatrically um, this weekend. Yes. And Poe is at the film festivals. Just film festivals. And yep. then, uh, you know, as far as Poe's continued journey, we're just sort of like in the process of that now. I think it's, this was just the first month and it was five film festivals I was invited to. So yeah. I think it's just going to continue to do a ride on that point, um, just sort of to build that stuff up. Because, I mean, at this point, you know, it's, you know, I think they're going to see how many awards they can win. And maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe if we can get little Julian to the Oscars or something like yeah. that, that would be cool. That'd be amazing. That'd be amazing. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, y'all. It's good to have you here. You too. If you guys want to find me online, I'm at yell.tv. That's Y-A-E-L.tv. I'm also on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, everything at Yell Teagle. That's Y-A-E-L-T-Y-G-I-E-L. -E -E I also have a podcast. It's called Intimate Interrogations. It's sometimes as dirty as it sounds. And here at After Buzz on a slew of other shows, we will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. Yeah. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.